Hello everybody. Today we're going to test measures of variance or uh, measures of dispersion. They both mean the same thing. First, let's review. In our last video we discussed how to find the different measures of center of which we had four. Uh, we had either X bar or mu which is considered the mean. We have median, which is the middle value after the data is placed in order. We have the mode, which is the most frequently occurring data value. And the mid-range, which is a real simple, quick and easy way of determining a measure of center. It's you add the lowest value plus the highest value and then you divide that result by two. The reason why we have two, two symbols for the mean, either this X bar thing or the Greek letter mu, is because it's dependent upon whether the information you're given is the entire population of data or whether it's simply just a sample. Either way, the calculation for the mean is the same. So let's go over that. And in order to do this, it's very simple. If you remember from our last video, you always start out a function with the equal sign. The formula, the Excel formula for the mean is... Uh, at the word average, so A V E R A G E, and that shows up. I'm gonna double click on that, and I'm going to click on the first cell, hold the mouse button down, drag down to the last cell, then I am going to close my parentheses and press enter. And that gives me the mean value of my data set. Now, just so that you know, if you need to expand it a little bit more to get uh, more decimal places or not, um, you go up to the very top letter, you can condense it like this, but then it won't give you any decimal places. But if you expand it, it'll give you more decimal places. The next value is the median, and it's pretty much just as simple. I'm just going to go through these equals M E D, and you see it shows up as median. I'm going to grab the first one by clicking on it, drag down to the last one while holding down the mouse button and letting go. Close my parentheses, press enter. Now, uh, for those of you that are using uh, a Mac or a Mac version of Excel, I think it automatically closes the parentheses for you. I'm not 100% sure of that. The next value is the mode. We would type in equals M O D E. Okay, so uh, in newer versions of Excel, we either have mode.mult or mode.sngl. We only use the uh, mode.sngl in this course, so I'm going to click on that. I prefer that you do not use this one. This is what's called a legacy function. It has the little triangle there, the little uh, orange warning or yellow warning triangle. Um, it will work for now, but if you ever start to use future versions of Excel, it will no longer work. So we're going to use mode.sngl. And I don't know if this data has a mode. The most frequently occurring data value. And it does. It must have at least 284s in there. Yep, I see them. Okay. Now the mid-range is a little bit more complicated because there's no canned function for that. So we have to make it up. If you remember from our last uh, spreadsheet that we did, we can say 
equals, and then max, open parenthesis. So we're going to grab all of these, and it's going to automatically pick the max, plus min, open parenthesis, grab the top one all the way down to the bottom one, close that parenthesis, close the big parenthesis, divided by 2. And that gives me a mid-range of 69.5. Now let's talk about our measures of variance. We have one called the range. In order to get the range, it's very simple. Uh, simply put, it's just the maximum value minus the minimum value. It's a measure of variance, and it's not a very good one. It's what we call a biased estimator of the variance, and it's biased because if it's a very small number, it tells us a lot, but a big number doesn't tell us very much. But because it is used from time to time, I'll just explain to you what it is. It's simply the largest data value minus the smallest data value. So we'll say equals max of all of these numbers here minus min of all of these numbers here. Close that and there we go. So we have a range of 45. Now we get into some uh, very detailed information. We have something that we call a population variance. The symbol that we use for population variance is this Greek lowercase sigma. And it looks like raised to the second power. But that's just the symbol that we use. The Greek letter sigma with a little 2 above and to the right. That will give me something we call the population variance. The population variance is if all this information that I'm given over here, if that is the entire population data. Usually it's not. But in this case, for just this calculation right now, let's pretend that it is. Now, if we assume that that's population data, then the population variance will give us a number based upon the population variance is calculated differently from what we call the sample variance. Those are two different calculations. Usually, we're going to end up using the sample variance for things that we do in this course. But you will sometimes need to calculate a population variance, again, if the measures that you're given represent all of the measures available, meaning all of the measures in the entire population. So let's calculate that on the spreadsheet equals and what do you think it's going to be we're looking for variance so I'm gonna start typing in VAR and if you notice we have VAR dot P and VAR dot S now over here we have again what are called legacy functions we do not use those functions in this class anymore we're going to use the newer Excel functions. So VAR.P, I hope you know, should, you know, it does stand for the variance of a population. And of course, VAR.S is variance of a sample. But if you ever forget that, it will tell you right here calculates the variance based upon the entire population. So because we're finding sigma with the little 2, I'm going to click on VAR.P. And again, I just click over here, grab the top one, hold the mouse button down, go down to the bottom one, 
close parenthesis, press enter. At this point, what these numbers mean to you, the measures of variance at this point, don't worry about it. This is just a calculation. You basically just need to know that the population variance is calculated differently from a sample variance and it depends upon what information you're given. So right now, again, these numbers are just an abstraction to you. They're just numbers. And we are going to work a lot with the variance and standard deviation measures. Okay, so let's go to population standard deviation equals and we will type in we will type in uh, let's see we're looking for standard deviation so I'm going to type in ST and if you look we have one STDEV dot P and STDEV dot S so I'm gonna click on this and this says calculates the standard deviation based upon the entire population Again, these are the legacy functions. We're not going to use those anymore. So I'm going to double click on the stdev.p. And I'm going to grab the top value, go down to the bottom value, close my parenthesis, press enter. And I have 10.906. Again, it's just a number. I will tell you this, though, that the uh, standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So if you want to ever want to know a population standard deviation and you're given a population variance, all you would have to do is take the square root of that variance to get the population standard deviation. And that's the same thing for the sample measures as well. So very quickly, in order to get the sample variance, we would say equals VAR. And instead of VAR.P, like we used before, we're going to go with VAR.S because this isn't what we're now looking for is the sample variance. And if you see here, estimates the variance based upon a sample. And now I am going to grab the top one, go down to the bottom one, close parenthesis, press enter, and there we go. And for the standard deviation equals ST. And if you see it, we have STDEV.S. Going to double click on that grab the top one, go down to the bottom one, close parenthesis, and press enter. If you notice also, if you take the square root of the sample variance, if you just took the square root of it, you would get the sample standard deviation. Also notice that the sample variance is slightly higher than the population variance and similarly the sample standard deviation is a little bit higher than the population standard deviation and that's just because of the nature of how these things are calculated. This concludes the lesson on measures of variance and dispersion.